Hello, dear friends. Uh, this is Joel Humphreys, and I'm glad to be with you again to share with you a word from the Bible. A ten-minute message, I believe, will be a blessing to your heart, and I hope and pray it will be. I pray that God will help you to see the need of, of this message. I've entitled it that the key, the one key, the one key uh, is Jesus. Jesus is the key. He's the key. <clears throat> And this is important. And I have a key to my car. Now, that might be the finest car that has ever driven. But it, it's practically useless without the key. Without that key, the motor don't start. Without that key, I can't even get in if the doors are locked. And so I need the key. The key is important. And just so, Jesus is the key to your life. If you really want to get started and live for God and please the Lord, you must learn to trust in the Lord Jesus and let Him be your life and let Him be the key that gets the motor started. Let Him be the key that gets you into situations and gets you out and keep you going. And so it's important. The Bible says over in Luke and Acts, the fourth chapter, Acts 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other name than Jesus. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now the Bible says there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, forgiven, saved from hell, forgiven and have a home in heaven forever. It's all yours when you believe in Jesus Christ who died for you upon the cross, paid for all your sins, and then rose again the third day, went back to heaven where he is now interceding. And he's coming back to, to, to bless you and guide you and direct your life. So we need to see that he's the key. He's the only one under heaven that can save us. Put your trust in him right now. Say, Lord God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he paid for my sins. I believe he rose again. Come in my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray that prayer and you'll live forever in the hand of God. He'll guide your life. And you'll be a Christian and you'll never die. You'll be with God in eternity. Oh, I praise God. I charge you. Meet me in heaven, my brother. Meet me there, my sister. I am hoping to see you there. Now the Bible says over in John the 16th chapter, these things he said, <clears throat> Hitherto uh, you have asked nothing in my name, and you sh but now ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So it's good to pray in the name of Jesus. Father God, I'm praying for this or that. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. That is saying, I believe Jesus approves of this. I'm praying it because he's my Savior and my Lord. I'm praying this because I'm in him and he's in me. And in that name, God will answer. God will answer. Over in John 16 and verse 20, Jesus said, I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, and the world will rejoice. Christians, there are times when we must weep. <clears throat> there are times when we must be sorrowful and lament. And he says the world will rejoice, but you will be sorrowful. But your, joy, your sorrow shall be turned into joy because you believe in my name. So believe on the name of Jesus. It's the key to overcoming the doubts and fears of this life. It's the key that opens the door. It's the key that brings us in. And I praise God that when you believe in him, you're safe and secure forever. In uh, John Bunyan's story, classic story uh, of uh, Pilgrim's Progress, Mr. Christian is on his way to heaven. And he runs into different experiences in different situations. And he, he's over, he comes to a place that he gets off the road, the highway, and he gets off the road a little far, a little bit, and there's a big castle. And there's dark clouds around it. And as he draws closer, it gets darker. And he looks at the name of the castle, and it's Castle of Doubt and Unbelief. And he's allowed some doubts to come into his mind. He begins to doubt the scripture, to doubt whether God loves him or not. 
to doubt whether he's on the right road or not. And he is drawn to that old castle and the door opens and there's a great giant. And the giant is named Despair. And old Despair grabs him and throws him in a dungeon and shuts the door, the iron gate. And he's locked in a dungeon of darkness. And in that dungeon of darkness, under the thigh of old giant Despair and a castle of doubt, Mr. Christian happens to reach in his pocket and there he's forgotten about a key that's there. That key will open any door. And he pulls it out and it's the key of prayer. <laughs> And he takes that key of prayer and he unlocks that old castle door. And he gets out and he flees and he gets away from the old giant and he gets back on the highway toward heaven. And what John Bunyan was saying to us is this. That we can become doubtful. We can allow doubts and unbelief to come into our thinking. And when we do, we end up in that old castle of despair. Where the giant despair rules over us and we have despair in our hearts. We need to take the key of prayer. Jesus said, pray in my name, and I will open that door. Pray in my name, and I will come to you. Pray in my name, and the answer will be yours. Oh, we need to pray with the key of prayer. But Jesus is the key. He is the key. And when we pray in his name, the door is open, and we go on in. Oh, we need to get closer to the Lord. We need to get closer to him and walk with him because that is what we need in our lives. We need that more than anything else. We need to get closer to Him and be caught up with Him. And, and in that way we find, oh, praise God, we find out where we're going. The Lord will speak to you. The Lord will speak to you. And He'll keep you close to Him. What you need to do is recognize that we need to stay close to God. And to stay close to God, you need to pray. And you need to dedicate your life every day, one day at a time, walk with God and say Lord help me today to live for you help me today to live for you we need to do that I have a cell phone and every once in a while that cell phone will start bleep beeping and that means that it's that it has a certain beep to it that, that tells me that it's, that it's going out on me it needs to be recharged and I have to take my recharger and plug it in and leave it overnight and the next morning that, that phone is ready to go again and that's the way it is with the Christian. We in our lives we need recharging. And that recharging comes from drawing close to the Lord. It comes from prayer and commitment to God. It comes from dedicating your life on a daily basis to Him. And if you don't pray and you don't dedicate your life and you allow the old world to begin, begin to seep into your life and you begin to think like the world, pretty soon you're going to realize that your battery is about dead and you need a recharging. Oh, praise God, every day I must be recharged in the Lord Jesus. I must come to Him and pray, God, help me today to live for God and seek the way of the Lord. That's so important. Oh, it's so important to draw near to Him and let Him revive you again. Oh, the old song, revive us again. Fill each heart with our love. May each life be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Revive us again. May God bless you, Christian. May you need a reviving. May I be talking to someone right now and your heart's grown cold. Come back to the fire. Come back to the Lord. On your knees to your God, say, forgive me and revive me. And recharge me, Lord, I believe. And I want to walk with our faith and trust in God. He'll do it. He loves you so much. You'll never know how much He loves you. And He's waiting for you to call on Him. He wants to come to you. And He wants to bless your life. And make it blossom and make it grow and make it shine. With the light of heaven. God bless you. And remember, Jesus is the key. Amen. God bless you. Amen.